Now, lots of this year, this year, I think, are getting into the Christmas spirit a little bit earlier to help, I don't know, see off the gloom maybe of 2020. Celebs are getting in on the act too, from Michelle Keegan to Dame Joan Collins, both putting up their trees in lockdown too. I mean, let's face it, we're all searching for a little bit extra positivity at the moment. So if you've not put it up already, are you starting to think about your tree? And are you going for a real one or an artificial tree? Are you considering perhaps which is better for the planet? Well, here to help us with the real versus fake dilemma is John Buckley, Managing Director of the Carbon Footprint Limited, based here in Hampshire. John, good afternoon. Lovely to have you there. Good afternoon. So start off by telling us a little bit about Carbon Footprint Limited. Who are you and what do you do, John? Sure. Well, we're a carbon management company based in Hampshire. We're all about trying to provide solutions to climate change in terms of helping. Uh, most of our time is spent helping businesses um, around the world uh, to reduce their environmental impact. But we also have car carbon calculator tools for individuals to use to work so they understand what their environmental impact is. Uh, and also projects that people can support around the world as well in terms of carbon offsetting if they want to balance out their carbon emissions that they're creating. So, you know, we have a website which people can go and log on to and have a look at. It's carbonfootprint.com, well worth a look. OK, yeah, I know you told me about your carbon footprint calculator and the fact that I could go on as an individual to check my carbon footprint. And I must admit, despite my best intentions, I haven't got round to it yet, John, but I will do it. I know it's a good thing to do, but it's kind of like that moment when you step on the scales and you kind of look between your fingers going, I want to look, but I don't want to look at the same time. But it's a good thing for us all to be aware of. Um, so one of the things you do is give businesses tips for offsetting their carbon footprint mm. are there little things that we can put in place perhaps as a business or an individual to improve our carbon footprint well there's lots of things that we can do is it the, the little things are, are great so simple things like turning off equipment when they're not being used so to turn the telly off the television off when it's not being used the xbox off if the kids play on things like that um uh, turn lights off all that sort of it all helps and it all helps reduce uh, carbon emissions uh, the other thing that you can do if, you, if you're owning your own home and paying for your own bills is you can switch your energy to a, a green energy provider which is a really simple thing to do and a lot of the green tariffs now are about the same price as the the standard ones anyway Way. so that's that's pretty easy and like i say yeah firstly calculate your own carbon emissions work out where your carbon emissions are coming from and then see what you can do to reduce there's lots of tips on our website and then once you've done that you know you can also look at potentially offsetting and maybe planting trees in places around the world to try and try and help balance out some of those carbon emissions have things changed for you as a business during the coronavirus because lots of people are now of course working from home rather than working in offices um, in terms of the carbon emissions, I, I think it has, in some ways, helped. Um, there's obviously less cars on the roads, well, there have, have been less cars on the roads on certain times, so that obviously saves some carbon emissions. Mm. Um, as we as we move into winter, though, and people will then have to start heating their homes, that's when the carbon emissions start to go up. So it's probably more efficient for people to be in offices, in, in all reality, during the winter time, um, and sharing you know, office space and, and the kind of community heating that's going on there rather than having to heat their own individual homes. You talked about replanting trees. Lots of people this year, I don't know for one reason or another, seem to be considering buying an artificial tree. Perhaps, I don't know, more than any other time. And I don't know whether it's because people might think it's a better choice for the planet. But is it, John? Well, it depends how long you keep the artificial tree for. If if you can keep it for at least five years, then it probably balances out in terms of the carbon emissions of a of a real tree. But it it, it depends on so many factors. So if, you know, if if your if your real tree is coming from quite a distance, then it'll have higher carbon emissions than than a, a locally grown tree. Yeah. If, if you can if you can buy a a real tree that has roots on that you can mm. use and then put out in the garden and maybe pot on um, so that it keeps growing mm. uh, and, and you can use it the following year then that's that's a really good solution so that's that's probably the best thing to do if you can do that yeah but i think if people are looking to plant bring in christmas trees now into their homes and have an early christmas and get things rolling 
then you've got to be a little bit aware of how long the, the, a real Christmas tree will last for, especially in a heated, <laughs> heated house. Three days. <laughs> yeah, the needles will start dropping off, yeah. won't they? So you've got to yes. be careful you don't put them too close to the radiators. Yeah, exactly. And like you say, if you get an artificial tree, it might be a, a better choice for the planet if you're able to keep it for a number of years and just keep Absolutely. recycling it and recycling it. Um, yeah, so get a, get, a, get a reasonably good one that you're happy with and, and can, you know, I've, I've got one, I, I use an artificial tree and we've we've had it for, I know it must be well over 11 years, it's before, before my youngest son was born, so I, I know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know we've had it for quite a long time and we keep, keep putting it out in the loft and, and using it again, so if you've got one, keep using it, but um, yeah, you can, you can also look at using a real tree as long as it's not going to be in the home for well over a month. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask you, John, whether or not you have a real or an artificial tree and you've answered that question for me for you now as a family because you've had this for the last 11 years and your son has known it since he was really little would you be disappointed if you didn't get it out every year is, has it become part of your christmas tradition that you wouldn't like to move away from I think that's a good point, isn't it? I kind of remember when I was little, we had artificial Christmas tree as well, and it was kind of the smell of it, which is part of the smell of Christmas. <laughs> yes. uh, and I think, yeah, so I think it is. Yeah, we'll keep using the Christmas tree. It's, it, last time we pulled it out, it was still still in reasonably good, Nick, even after 11 years. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep using it. And certainly children kind of take comfort in doing the same things every year. You know, the thought of you one year going out and spending a lot of money and buying this real tree and bringing it home really proudly, and your son probably then turning around and going, oh, where's the tree out of the loft gone? <laughs> you can't win, can you? <laughs> I don't know. I think there's, there's obviously a bit of excitement going to get a, a, a new Christmas tree as well, especially a real one. So I, I kind of get that. But I think if, if you can try and buy one that has the roots on, then it's even more exciting if you can put it back in the garden afterwards and, and hopefully keep it growing and, and look after it over the, over the whole of the year. Yeah, it's a good thing to do. Uh, John, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and giving us the benefit of your expertise, certainly when it comes to carbon footprints. Uh, and if it's not too early on November the 15th, I've got to say happy Christmas. <laughs> happy Christmas. <laughs>